Hey there, I'm Joel Jameson. And I'm Howie Clark. And in this week's episode of 8 Weeks Out TV, we have a special guest who's going to show you how small changes can lead to big gains in your performance. So today on the show, we have Dr. Jerry Ramajita, who is really one of the top therapists in the world. He just got back from the UK working with uh, Dan Paff, who's widely regarded as you know, one of the track, top track and field coaches out there. He's uh, ART certified. He's done a lot of stuff with Guy Boyer. He's done, he does electroacupuncture. I mean, this guy really, he, he does it all. Uh, the, I'm, I'm really excited to meet him. Yeah. Uh, you've spoke very highly of him for years now. And uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be a, a very nice change for, uh, for the, everyone viewing out there. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a guy I met back in the early 2000 range, uh, working with the Seahawks. He's worked with a number of professional sports teams and athletes out there, and he's really the go-to guy to keep, keep top athletes healthy. So we wanted to bring him on the show and talk about how he evaluates movement and what his, his, uh, you know, his overall philosophy is. And hopefully you guys are gonna get a lot out of it. So let's, let's take a look with Dr. Jerry Ramajita. All right, so today I'm here with special guest, Dr. Jerry Ramajita, who I met first, uh, I think back in 2003 or four, okay. some, some, something like that. And uh, Dr. Ramajita was a therapist working with the Seahawks at the time. And since then, he's gone over to work with uh, UK athletics and top field uh, track and field coaches like Dan Paff. I um, actually just got back. What, uh, what was that like over there? Yeah, it was a good experience. I was over there, brought over by UK athletics to be their lead performance therapist, uh, doing some track side work with, with their top athletes and coaches, as you mentioned, Dan Path. Uh, yeah, good experience overall. So good Jerry, Jerry's Canadian, more forgiven for going over there. Uh, but we brought him in today, and, and over the next few weeks, we want to take a look at what uh, Dr. Ramajita talks about in terms of micro movements, uh, adding up to macro movements. And he's very unique uh, in his approach to, to work with athletes, and obviously had a ton of success, success working with world class athletes. And so we wanted to bring him in the next couple of weeks to look at some different stuff that uh, he evaluates when he works with his athletes and uh, show you guys what he does. So. Today we're going to start off with the ankle and then work our way up, so great. Let's take a look. All right. So we're going to start with the foot, ankle and foot. Like uh, Joel just mentioned, uh, a concept that was introduced to me by one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Guy Boye, is micro movement dictates macro movement. Uh, other influences, Dr. Mike Leahy with active release techniques and the concepts and ideas that have come with that uh, have all played a part in kind of how I've brought things together. So the first thing with the foot uh, we look at, or I like to look at, is the, the integrity of the intrinsic muscles of the foot. There are a large number of muscles, and we know from the research that each muscle has an influence on proprioception. Therefore, it's important to ensure that the musculature is pliable, that there's good compliance, uh, there isn't a lot of scar tissue, and just general good mobility in those tissues that will ensure that you have good proprioceptive input into the, into the spinal cord level, into the brain level, and ensure that you're getting good activation through the chain. So it's just kind of palpating, feeling the tissues. If you find anything of, of major significance, we're gonna show some things that the athlete can do to self-manage that. Um, and that's the starting point. From there, I'd like to look at the major joints through the foot. We have the first MTP joint. We have the proximal end of the first metatarsal joint at the cuneiforms. And then we have the navicular, and then the navicular with the talus. And then we have the subtalar joint, all kind of critical in terms of con contributing to the overall motion of the foot, which is primarily uh, supination and pronation. It's a combination of small contributions of all these joints. So when you start to lose mobility in any of these areas, the consequence may appear to be decreased pronation or result in excessive movements up the chain in the knee or, or hip. Uh, and that's why it's important just to get a general idea if you're getting movement at each of these. So the first one, the first metatarsal phalangeal joint, the biggest thing is do they have good quality extension? We know that when the athlete goes to push off, if they can't get extension, you can lose as much, of 20, as, much as 20 percent of your push off strength, which can have a significant impact on performance. It's the difference between winning and losing at the highest levels. Yeah, or 20 percent. 20 percent could be first or, or last. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So the other thing that this that the degree of extension or the quality of extension will have is that when the athlete is on that foot at push off. If they have a good quality, they can get a good base of support. 
if this is rigid and it becomes a less stable platform, now that's going to have impact on the ability to stabilize the ankle, the knee, the hip, uh, can lead to altered mechanics. Moving up, we, if we continue up and we get into the midfoot, there's a number of joints here. And what you want to just ensure, and I'm going to stand up here, is does the midfoot have good free motion or does it feel really rigid to your contact? Again, we're going to go into some self-management exercises that will allow one to see what the quality of movement is at the midfoot between the, the, big, the first uh, metatarsal and the midfoot. Now, if we move up into the uh, talocrural joint or the ankle joint, we know that dorsiflexion is very important for athletes. The degree of when going into dorsiflexion is important because it puts pre-stretch on the big muscles of the calf, gastroc, soleus, uh, and then the deep flexors, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, uh, and tibialis anterior. All those muscles, when we go into dorsiflexion, are in pre-stretch, and when you come into contact with the ground in that position, in a slightly dorsiflexed position, or when you maintain that, it gives you a lot more power because that muscle is in a position to absorb shock and then push off. So, Raise your transfer of kinetic energy. Absolutely. So often what we see is athletes landing in a plantar flex position. What, that, what occurs is when you hit the ground in that position, you have to absorb the, the impact and then gather and then push off. What that translates into is increased ground contact times. So we know. Yeah, and we know that when we want power, we want that ground contact time to be as short as possible while we generate maximal force. And when you maintain dorsiflexion and that pre-stretch, you're just putting yourself in a much better position to get that power. So I just found out why I wasn't fast. That's good. <laughs> a simple technique change. A few years later, yeah. yeah. No problem. <laughs> so, exactly. Now let's say that they don't have a therapist or you know, experienced trainer to evaluate kind of the overall range of motion. Is there something that uh, athletes can do on their own to see you know, maybe where their range of motion in the ankle joint is? Yeah, absolutely. And there's, there's a few simple things that we can show that will allow one to identify if they're lacking. You know, for, on a table with a therapist, it's, it's kind of easy. You're, you know, you're getting pretty much to neutral. We'd like to see up to 20 degrees of dorsiflexion and there are things that we would do um, to improve that. And you have a history. I do. With I do. I, injury. Yeah, I kind of jacked my ankle up a few years back and never properly rehabbed it. <clears throat> and then when I came back to playing, I did notice some loss of motion, uh, my range of motion, and then um, loss of dorsiflexion. Loss of dorsiflexion. I ended up you know, having some knee issues, and I, right. I'm sure it's contributed, but right. uh, uh, yeah, it's something I was definitely aware of. Right. Yeah, because the biggest thing with the, in terms of dorsiflexion is the talus is wider anteriorly. So to get good quality dorsiflexion, the talus has to be able to glide under the tibia. And uh, again, there are certain techniques we would use to make sure we get that quality. Yeah, well, let's, let's take a look. Uh, I know you mentioned there's a way that athletes can monitor or, or sorry, evaluate their, their range of motion through the ankle joint. Let's take a look at that. So this is a quick test. We were talking about dorsiflexion, and this is just a quick assessment. You can see we put a little piece of tape there on the floor um, so that we're going to mark whichever foot he does first, uh, just from the distance from the wall. So what I'm going to have him do is face the wall. He's going to put his foot on the mark where he thinks he can get his knee to the wall. What we're going to do is I want to make sure he's in a position where he keeps his hips straight. And then the instructions you're going to give them, when they bring the knee forward, we want to make sure that the knee stays over the middle midline of the foot. And he can get to the wall without the heel lifting off. If he can't, you're going to, he's going to move his toe in a little closer. If he, if he gets to it easy, he just brings the foot back. And what we're looking is the point that the knee can get to the wall good and the heel not lift off. So that was pretty good. And I don't think we get much farther, so we're going to lift there. Okay. okay, and then we're going to compare. That was pretty good. His knee cleared the foot adequately. And uh, I'm happy with that. So now we're just going to compare the other side. Again, make sure the hips, gonna, there you go. So go ahead and move forward, keep the hips straight. So keep this hip 
There, good. So go ahead, come back. So you can see already he's got significantly more range. The, he's over the midline of the foot and the knee is easily getting there. So he's got, and we can stop there, he's got double the range on the left versus the right. We knew the right was the one that was uh, more restricted. Uh, and therefore, that can serve as a stretch. So you can have an athlete do that as a stretch, keeping the heel down, bringing the knee toward, especially on the side that is restricted, and uh, serves as a good screen. For, and we should have symmetry between the sides. That's awesome. Great stuff. Uh, really appreciate you coming down. And next week, what are we going to be talking about? The knee. The knee. Awesome. So uh, thanks again to Dr. Aaron Gita for coming down here, and Harry for being the uh, guinea pig, as always. It's your job. But uh, we will see you again next week. We'll be talking about the knee and how we go ahead and evaluate that as well. So thanks again for watching 8 Weeks Out uh, TV, and we'll see you again next week. Most coaches and athletes really don't understand what conditioning is or how to develop effective training programs to include it. And the truth is that conditioning is often the difference between winning and losing. You know, conditioning seems to be given short shrift, and nobody speaks about it with confidence like he does. I created the BioForce Certified Conditioning Coach Course to solve all these problems and more. I've done tons of other certifications. Nobody does this. I've put over 15 years of work and understanding to give coaches a step-by-step -step guide to maximize performance for each and every athlete. I'm taking a lot with me, so I, I couldn't write fast enough. So. It was great. It really fit in well with my schedule. Joel's information is so valuable. With my clients, the results that I got were amazing. I never thought possible. This is the key to winning. This is the key to success. Just beyond my imagination. <laughs>